We left off having built out the navigation and the banner for the website. The next thing we want to do is begin to add content down below. So let's go into edit and what I recommend you do is select the spacing stack here, go to the edit mode title and let's call it navigation and banner. And then I want to hide that. So we've cleaned up very quickly the layout in the edit mode and we can see what these are simply because of the custom edit that we've done here to the name. Next, what I want to do is add a couple of containers that are going to go below the banner and then actually overlap onto them. And we can use the overlap stack here in Foundry 3 to accomplish that. So I'm going to drag the overlap stack onto the page. And we're not going to customize it quite yet. I want to go ahead and get some content inside first. So we're going to use two columns. And so I'm going to use my toolbox for that purpose. Choose the columns here drag them into the overlap stack. And then next I want to use the card feature inside of Foundry. So I'm going to grab the card, drag it into column one, and then I'm going to hold down my option key and drag down to duplicate that into column two. Now let's see what that gets us so far. Let's preview that. We can see that our cards are here and the card gives it this nice border and shadow to give it some style and we see that it's basically full width. We haven't constrained the width at all, and they're not yet overlapping, of course. Now, we should know by now what to do to constrain the width, and that is to use the max width stack. So I'm gonna go into max width under my toolbox, drag that just inside of the overlap, and then I'm gonna move my columns inside of that max width stack. I'm gonna then assign a custom setting of 1100 pixels for the width and then we'll preview that and we can see that that accomplishes at least getting those more centered and constrained into a smaller width like so. Next I want to get those to overlap onto the banner above it. In order to do that we'll of course go to the overlap stack itself and it's actually quite simple to use. What we see here is a vertical and a horizontal overlap. We want to move it up, so that's obviously vertical. And to do that, we want to assign a value for the extra small device. I'm going to make that 50 pixels. And what that does is it moves it up on our smallest device here. And so this is now overlapping, as you can see. I could allow that to continue with the rest and have those all inherit. That would eventually end up with it looking like this but I want to move these up a little bit higher on the larger views and so to do that I want to actually customize the small layout and I want to double that. So by typing in 100 you can see quickly that these move up even further and it's very self-explanatory here. We've got the amount, the value, which direction is it up or down and then everything below is going to inherit that value. Now for example if I wanted the small device to also use this then I would make this one inherit and then I would come down to the medium and assign the 100 to that. And I would get the same result here in the large layout view. Now the next steps would be to simply customize the content inside of these cards in order to get the content that we want onto the page. But for the sake of time, instead, I'm actually going to copy the cards as they were styled inside of the uh, project that we are replicating and that's simply going to move along the process a lot faster because the editing of headers and paragraphs is obviously very simple. The new stack here that we have included with this is the button stack, pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to change the label, the link, the colors, rounding, all kinds of different styling here inside. It's pretty self-explanatory. So the result is this. We've achieved this layout with the overlap stack, two columns, and then the card stack to create the styling of the containers that hold this content here inside. So let's move on next down below where we're going to add more content. I'm going to go back into edit. The first thing I want to do is add space to move this content away from the content above. So I'm going to use the spacing stack, drop it at the very bottom of my layout, and then I'm going to go ahead and customize that. So we're going to use padding. I'm going to adjust it to advanced. That allows me to set unique um, numbers or sizing on each of the sides. So I'm going to begin here with 150 on the top and the bottom, and we'll do 20 on the left and the right. I'm going to allow the small to inherit that, and it does so by not checking this box. So that means it's going to inherit what's above. 
However, I do want the medium breakpoint and everything larger to have a different amount of space. So I'm going to check padding for medium breakpoint and apply 200 to top and bottom and then 20 to left and to right. That is going to set a different uh, amount of space for the medium breakpoint and everything above that, the large, extra large, and extra, extra large. So if I scroll down, you'll see that space has opened up here in the edit view. Next thing I want to do is use a max width stack to constrain the content. I don't want it going full width across the full available width of the page. So max width will constrain that. And then next we're going to add columns. So this is going to be a multi-column layout using nested columns. It's not com complicated, but I do want to show how you would achieve that. So I'm going to drop in my two columns here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add one more set of columns and drop it into the second column. Now the purpose of this section of the tutorial is not to show how to customize content so much as it is about how to achieve layout. So to speed up the process, I'm going to copy and paste content from the project that we are replicating. It's possible that as you build your website, you would do something similar. Perhaps you would create a layout of content on one page and want to use that same layout on another page, but then edit it to customize it for that page. I'm going to give you a tip if you're going to be doing that and pasting between different pages, you cannot paste inside of a column. So what you might do first is just add some placeholder content there. So for example, I could grab a header stack, drag and drop that inside of the column. And now what I can do is go to my other project, grab the stacks that I want to replicate. And I'm going to come back and just with that header still selected, paste, and that is going to place it into the column immediately below that header. Now I can remove that and we have the content where we want it inside of that column. So you can see that that's pretty straightforward in terms of doing that. Now this is actually a mistake. I want this content in the first column above. So with it selected, I held down my command key, selected each of those stacks. I can simply drag out of there and up into the column above. So this is the one column stack that I wanted in to begin with here. Next, I'm going to do the same thing that I did a moment ago in a bit of a different way. Holding down the Option key, you can duplicate an existing stack on the page, moving it down as such. And then what I want to do from there is take the other content that I'm going to be using and paste it right below. Now, we're going to replicate this a couple of times because we're going to, or actually more than a couple, we're going to end up with four columns here. So I'm going to add, by clicking the plus button, a column. You can see that that has made it column three. Again, highlight those and drag them down. And then one more, column four. And then we're going to do, again, it's selecting um, with the command key held, then option drag to duplicate. Now, of course, these would all use different text, but for the sake of time, once again, we're going to leave it as it is. The goal here is to help you see how to achieve a certain type of layout. So let's come down. And let's see what we have so far. We have two columns. This is our left column here. This is our right column here. And what Stax is doing is it is deciding for us how it wants to lay out that content. And it's deciding what it thinks we want based on the default settings. But that may not be the case. It may not be what we're trying to achieve. In this case on the right, this is not what I want. I want there to be two by two, essentially like a square here. And so we can make some adjustments now at this point in order to achieve that. So let's go back to our edit mode and let's take a look at what we want to do with that second column in order to get it looking the way that we want. This column right here is the second column in our layout as far as we have our left and then our right. It's these columns though inside that are not laid out the way that we want. In order to get that correct, let's go to our first column and check the manual column width. By default, this is going to kind of do what it thinks is best, like we said, but what we're gonna do is tell it exactly what we want by adjusting these units based on the breakpoint. So extra small is 12, meaning it's gonna span the full width. And on a phone, that's what we want. We want it to be that full width so it's easy to see and read. But once we get to the medium, we want to set that to a six unit, meaning half of that available width. We're gonna do the same for the second column. Again, we're gonna choose manual, medium six. And then quickly I'm going to do the same for both the third and the fourth. 
So this is going to essentially achieve a grid for us using these settings. And if I preview that now, you're going to see it adjust. So this is right down the middle to the right, our second column. Inside of that, we have four more columns, but on a wider device, it's going to use six of the available 12 units. So we have six, six again, and then of course the second row of six and six. And so that achieves the layout that we want. And so you can see it's quite simple to nest the columns and to tell it exactly how you want those laid out on a device per device basis. It's extremely flexible as you can see because we have extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and XXL. That's six different breakpoints where you can specify exactly what you want those columns to do. But just because we have all of those available doesn't mean we have to touch all of those settings. The inherit setting makes it really easy to adjust it where you want it and then everything above that is going to take on that setting. And so that is a really um, complex kind of looking layout that's actually very easy to achieve. For the next section of content in this layout on this page, we're going to do something a bit different. I'm going to copy and paste the entirety of that content from the other project and paste it here in the edit view. We're going to do that below this spacing stack that has created all this space above and below our columns. I'm simply going to paste that now and we're going to preview this and see how that looks. So here's our section. We've got a background image spanning the entire width and then some content inside. Now the reason I'm jumping ahead like that and doing it is because everything we see here is something that we already have done. We've used the columns and we've done most of that here in the header above. So let me break it down quickly for us. Just as a refresher, we've got our background. That image is dropped in here. And then we've got spacing to separate the content inside from the top and from the bottom of that image. And then we're just using columns inside just as we've done already. So there's nothing really particularly new here that we need to focus on. And we're going to do something similar in the next section where I'm again going to paste the content over from the project. And so I'm going to do that now and place it down below. And everything here, once again, is something that we've already looked at in terms of spacing, columns, and, and whatnot. But we're going to adjust something a little bit differently from the project for the sake of showing you a couple of other stacks. So let's go and preview first. I'm going to go down and below that full width image that we just looked at, we have our new content. Nothing complex here. We have some columns, uh, two sets of those here. And so this is going to be what we customize using a couple of new stacks. So let's go back into edit and I'm going to want to add an icon alongside my content in each column. In order to do that, you can use the icons stack here in the Foundry 3 library. So I'm going to drag and drop that above my header. I'm going to click the plus button and choose badge bootstrap icons. We're using the bootstrap icons in this project. And then in the icon setting, I'm going to change that to the heart. Before we make any other changes, let's preview and see how that's turning out so far. So it centered this icon here above my header and my text. What I want to do is I want to align it in line with the header so that they're side by side in line together. To do that, we are going to use the container stack. Now, if you are a user of Foundry 1 or 2 or both, then you probably recognize the container stack because it was a frequently used stack in those versions. It still has a use in Foundry 3, but it doesn't do all of the same things that it used to do. I'm going to use it here so you can see an example of how it can be used in a project. So I'm going to drag and drop that onto the page immediately above the icons. While I could click the plus button to add some type of content inside, what I want to do in this case is add the icons and the header inside of it. So I'm simply going to drag and drop those in, and then I'm going to select the container and what we're going to adjust in the settings is this one, Display SCSS Grid. When I check that and set it to Row, that is going to put them in the same line next to one another. Previewing that, we'll see it does just that. We have the heart along with the header next to it in line. Now that doesn't look great, so there are a couple of additional adjustments that we're going to want to make. And I can make one of those here in the preview mode so we can see it update instantaneously. That's immediately below the option we just selected, we're going to apply a gap to the grid items. So I'm going to check that box. And like we see in other sections of Foundry 3, we have presets. So this gap preset gives us five different options to choose from. And I'm going to set 
it to two, which is going to create just a little bit more space. So it's right. It's not right up against that icon. We still need to center this text though, kind of in the middle vertically of this badge, this icon. We can do that in a couple of ways. One, we can use the spacing stack, which we're very familiar with at this point. Instead though, I'm going to do it a bit of a different way. I'm going to choose the header itself and I'm going to do custom line height for the header. So this is the default line height as is applied at the moment. It's somewhat arbitrary. You're going to have to play with the numbers if you want to make adjustments this way. But I'm going to make it 1.75 and preview that. And we can see that it has indeed moved down. So the larger that line height, um, the more space vertically that that header is going to fill. And that pushes it down and puts it right alongside that. So that looks much better. I might then choose to add a bit of spacing above this text to create a little bit of a gap in between. Um, but I could do that with the spacing stack once again to achieve it. So if I wanted to do this kind of layout or this kind of styling to my content, then I would simply replicate what I've done here for each of these. And that is what allows us to do that, the container stack, making that layout work the way it does. Now you should note that I did not place the paragraph inside of the container. If I had, we'd have a little bit something else happen that we don't really want. Let me show you what that would be. It's going to then do inline all three of these stacks, the icon, the header, and the text. And that doesn't look good. It's doing that because we've told it to. We've said everything in this container is going to be displayed as a grid in a row or in line. And so we want to leave the paragraph out of that container so that it does not put that in line. In that case, it puts it below all of this because this is one row of content and this is a completely separate row. So let's move on to our next section of content. This will be unique compared to what we've done so far. We're going to use images and show some different examples of how you can present images on your website. I'm going to begin by using a columns grid stack and then we're going to drop an image stack inside of the first column. So I'm going to grab that from my toolbox place it there and then we'll drag and drop an image into the image well and then let's go to our second column and in this case we're going to use the slider stack the slider stack is part of foundry 3 and I have it here I'm going to drag and drop it into this column and this simply allows you to configure a slider that will scroll through and display multiple images and so you can see that it defaults to three so let me go in and throw a few here into these spaces And then I'm going to scroll down further than that, and I'm going to choose not to add another image. That's what this first one is for inside of the slider. But instead, down the next button is create a new column. So I'm going to create column three. And in this column, we are going to use the Whimsy stack. So I'm going to go down and grab Whimsy and place it in that column there. And this is a stack for displaying an image. So I'm going to drag and drop that into the drop zone. But it also allows us to apply an overlay that presents content on top of it. By default, it places a header as content. I'm going to go ahead and add, as well as a header, a paragraph of text. And then finally, we're going to add one more column. And I'm going to drag and drop an image into that. So let me go ahead from my uh, toolbox, add an image. And then I'll drop that in there. So let's go ahead and take a look in preview at what we have coming down below. You'll notice a couple of things. One, this does span the full width of the site. That's because we didn't put it inside of a max width stack. It has um, no constraint on it as far as how much space it uses. Next, you can see that there is styling automatically applied without me having done anything other than the defaults. We have the rounded corners some spacing or margin or gutter applied in between. In the slider we have a scrolling feature here. There's also an option to have the dots that appear down below um, in that place. And then if I hover over the whimsy image you can see the header uh, text appear along with the text 
uh, paragraph there. And then this is just a standard regular image here at the end. So these can all be configured in more um, finite ways to get it exactly the style that you want. For example, with Whimsy, of course, you can change the overlay colors that are used and you can make adjustments to the style of that um, in a number of different ways. Be, of course, careful with how much content you're going to be placing over that image. You could see there in the preview that with my defaults um, with the paragraph, for example, that it uses almost the entire space. Also, if you're going to be doing a row of images such as this using columns, it's recommended that you go ahead and style those or size them first to be the same dimensions so that the process of getting this layout like this is really easy. You can see that just dropping them into those image wells um, and no further customizations gave me this um, uniform layout. So setting that up in advance is, is helpful so you don't have to tweak a lot of other settings after the fact to get that to look um, uniform across the width of the page there. So that's a couple of different ways of presenting content, um, visual images on your page. So now we're going to continue down and add some new content in a way that we haven't yet looked at. And I'm going to do it another way here. I want to use two columns with some spacing applied to separate those. And instead of starting from scratch and doing that, I'm going to come back up above and just grab an example of that. So this one has space, it has max width, which I want, and has a couple of columns. So I'm going to take that, come down to the bottom and paste that there. And then all I need to do is simply delete the things I don't want. So I don't want a separate or a second set of columns in column two. I'm just going to make it real simple. I'm going to take this actually and move that down into the second column. And then what we really want to look at here is a new type of content. We're going to use a badge box. So I'm going to come back up in my library, grab the badge box stack and drop it here into view. This is going to be similar to the icons stack we looked at a few minutes ago. I'm going to click the plus button, choose icons, and then I'm going to click it again and choose bootstrap icons. Again, that is what we have chosen to use in this project. Let's look at the icon here. I'm going to change that and make it a star. And then I'm going to change the styling of the background to one of our um, color palettes. So let's try the secondary here. And that looks good. So let's go back to the icons itself and we can make this larger, this badge. And so we have a height and a width of the actual box itself. So I'm gonna make that 64 by 64. Now the icon inside looks small. And so let's adjust that. This is in rims, so I'm gonna make it two. And we're not gonna see that update right away, but we will in a moment when we go and preview that. But before we preview that, Let's add content. So we've got two sections in badge box. We've got the badge itself, which we've just done with the icons here. And then there's the content section down below. I'm going to speed up the process a bit by using an existing image from the project we're duplicating, paste that here, and then that's putting it below where we need it. It needs to go inside of the content. So let me drag and drop that up into that content area. Let's go ahead and preview that to see what the result is. And if I scroll down, we can see the badge. It's centered across the top and is cropped. So we're not seeing the full badge itself. It should have a bit more up above with rounded corners. So let's look at what we need to do to address that. I'm gonna go back into the edit. And what we have going on here is not anything that needs to be changed in the icons or the badge box itself. All of this is contained inside of the columns grid stack. And by default, the column grids will be disabling or hiding any overflow that's happening. So basically what we have is this image and this image defines the borders of that content. And so nothing can overflow outside of that. But in this case, we want the icon to do that exactly. So let's go back in our columns grid stack and uncheck the hide overflow. What that should do is allow that icon to come outside and it does so we can see that located there now in full because we have allowed overflow to occur let's do a couple of other things before we wrap up this section i'm going to go back into edit i'm going to choose to move this to the right and the way to do that is to choose a line right here 
So when we preview that, we can see that it's now up in the corner. I just like the way that looks better. And then let's adjust the columns a bit. First, let's take the column one. I'm going to adjust manual column width, and we're going to make it four units at the medium size. And if it's four at the medium for first column, that means we want it to be eight for the medium at the second column so that we equal 12 in that case. So I'll preview that now. We can see that it has um, reduced the size of the image and allowed our content here to um, stretch further across. Now I'd like this to be centered vertically. And it's really easy to do that here in the stack. And so if I come back up to the column stack again where we were a moment ago, here in column alignment, we have content alignment and then column alignment. We want to align the content. You can even see the note that this is talking about the vertical position. So I want to align that center, just the content, not the columns. So let's preview that again. And now we get the layout that I was looking for. We have four units of space for our image and badge box, and then eight units of space for the rest and it is vertically centered alongside that image. So you can see just a couple of quick settings to get a pretty nice looking layout there for that section of content. Moving on to the next section, we are going to once again take what exists in the project we are replicating and paste it down below. And this consists of mostly things that we have already looked at. We've got the background, but in this case, instead of using an image, it's using the preset mode that is right here, in which case it is set to simply preset, which allows us to utilize a color for the background. And so you can see that is applied here. And then next, what we want to do is take a look at the content that's actually inside. So we're using a couple of columns. And in fact, let's go ahead and preview so we can see what this is going to present to us. Two columns, we have header and content paragraph there. And then we have image quote, and this is all inside of a slider, and you can see the um, result and the functionality of that slider. So all of these things we've seen with the exception of the quote, let's go back into edit. And inside of the second column, we have the slider. We looked at that a few minutes ago when we used the slider to um, display multiple images. And in this case, we're going to use it to display content. And so that content is here and it is going to be spacing, an image, and the quote. So the content gets added through the slider. If I come down below all of the content that is added, we click the plus button. And instead of an image, which we did earlier, or a video, which you can also do, there's simply an option for content. In the case of content, it gives you a drop zone that allows you to place whatever you'd like inside. So again, that is spacing, the image, and then the quote. Now the quote stack is part of Foundry 3. We can find it in the library and that is going to give us the image itself of the quotation marks, the editable text for the quote, and then also the citation. The citation gets added in the settings here on the right side and so you would apply the person and the source in this area. And then there are some adjustments you can make to the styling, as is typical for a lot of these different types of content that you can add. So the result here is a rotating section of testimonials, essentially, with images and uh, the quotes. And I want to show you real quick on the images. This is a nice um, setting that's easy to apply inside of uh, the image stack that comes with Foundry 3. You can see here in the settings that this is actually a square image that was dropped here into um, the drop zone. But if we scroll down below, you will find that under the rounded corners section, instead of one of the five presets, there actually is an option for circle. So you don't need to know how to create an, a circle from an image and drop it in that way, stacks. In this case, the image stack in Foundry 3 will do that for you. And so it makes a nice uniform look for all of these. Once again, if we preview that, we'll see those here. And so that kind of covers um, mostly things that we've already done, but this one new section with the quotes. Now this does very nearly get us to the end of this series of tutorials that are building this website, but there is a little bit more left to come and some really, really important things to learn. And so I'm going to wrap up this video and we're going to continue and finish 
with a significantly shorter part 